Hey what's happening guys, Chris here with another Battlefield 1 weapon guide, and today I'm going to be taking a good look at the C93 carbine, one of the only suppressed guns in the whole game that can be used by the tanker, pilot or now the support class as a primary weapon. The C93 carbine is, as you'd probably assume from the name and appearance, a carbine variant of the Borchardt C93 pistol, so the gun pretty much functioned in the same sort of way. It was chambered to fire the 7.65mm Borchardt round in semi-automatic, with a box magazine size of 8 bullets, so no massive difference really in the way the gun worked or shot its lead, it was basically the same weapon. Of course, the main difference, being a carbine rather than a handgun, is all down to that wooden stock, which could be fitted to the back of the C93's receiver, transforming Borchardt's funky looking bullheaded pistol into a much more accurate and practical firearm allowing it to be more manageable to use, with some of the gun's recoil being soaked up by that stock supported by the user's shoulder. The C93 was sometimes sold with the attachable stock, but in Battlefield 1 the C93 carbine also features something else which is even more unique, a suppressor, in fact the first commercially successful sound suppressor ever to be created. This was known as the Maxim Silencer, which was patented in 1909 and primarily designed to be used with hunting rifles. The suppressors were a bit different to the ones used today, as they caught the muzzle gases emitted when firing and basically whirled them around through a curved baffle system, essentially creating a tiny vortex of gas which cooled and reduced in pressure as the gases moved along it, making the gun a quieter thing to shoot, plus helping to prevent hearing damage and noise pollution. The C93 was pretty much the first commercially successful mass-produced pistol to ever be made and so it was also the first of its kind to have a shoulder stock designed for it, basically meaning that the C93 carbine in Battlefield 1 is a bit of a unique thing, as it's practically the first pistol carbine ever to be created, using the first suppressor ever to be made too. A lot of people could argue that the C93 was a successful weapon, though it was never actually adopted by the military due to it being too expensive and complicated in design. That chunky backside made the pistol a pretty awkward thing to use, and when the gun's manufacturer, DWM, asked its creator, Hugo Borchardt, to basically try and get rid of that overhanging part and improve the design of the gun, Borchardt stubbornly decided to reject this idea, as he thought it was fine enough just the way it was. Definitely not the kind of guy who took criticism very well, and this massively impacted the gun's sales and overall popularity. Several military forces, including the US Navy, did run a few tests on the C93 pistol around the time it first became available and the fact that it could be turned into a pistol carbine type weapon with that attachable stock, which could have been more ideal for cavalry and other roles, was something that could have potentially generated more interest in the military, as you'd probably think. But it just didn't, because at the time, military forces were more bothered about finding a suitable handgun to arm their troops with, not pistol carbines. The C93's helpful but irrelevant shoulder stock wasn't really a deal breaker, and the C93 pistol itself wasn't reliable enough for military adoption as it needed perfecting, something Borchardt just wasn't willing to do. So the C93 carbine is a tanker pilot weapon, and as of the 2018 June update, it's also a support gun now too. You'll need to own the In the Name of the Sar DLC, and then you'll also need to do an assignment to unlock the gun as a primary weapon. There's only one task to do, and that's just to get 40 kills of the FT-17 light tank, so it might take a bit of grinding if you're not much of a vehicle player but it shouldn't really take too long to complete if you keep at it. I suggest using the flanker package as this is a pretty good one for snuffing out infantry, being able to fire off high explosive shells quickly and deal lots of splash damage. Though all of them are fine enough to do the job, just keep jumping into game modes of vehicles like conquest and operations and just rack up those light tank kills. But anyway, stats time. The C93 carbine in Battlefield 1 doesn't really hit very hard when you compare it to a lot of the other carbine type weapons, with a maximum close range damage of 26.5 up to 15 meters and a minimum damage of just 13.5 at the range of 37 meters and so on. And this practically mirrors the same damage graph that the C93 pistol has, which isn't really a huge surprise with it pretty much being the same gun. So it's not exactly a bulldozer and this means that you'll typically be able to drop an enemy player in 4 bullets up to 16 meters, but it could take up to 8 shots to kill someone further away, which is very similar to the MLE 1903 Extended, but having less range than the likes of the C96 carbine and POA artillery. The gun's close range damage is high enough to compete with the other pistol carbines, but it gets considerably worse the further away your target happens to be. A long range shot to the noggin is only really going to give your opponent a bit of a headache, dealing about 23 damage per round, 
which is a really tiny amount, considering a bullet has practically hit someone bang in the face. And if you were to line up and land four perfectly good headshots, an enemy with full health is still going to survive all of that head trauma. This is just an example of how poor the C93 carbine's damage output can be at those further distances, and if you're planning on having a one-on-one -on -one gunfight with another player at range, you'd better hope that enemy has already been shot up or we can buy something else first, as you're almost always going to be at a huge disadvantage. Now, just like the other pistol carbines, the C93 carbine fires in semi-auto, but you can actually shoot a bit quicker than the rest at 360 RPM, matching up with the ME 1903 Extended. It's not exactly miles ahead of the others, with the likes of the P08 Artillery, C96 Carbine and M1911 Extended all shooting just 60 RPM slower at 300 RPM, but it's still enough to make a bit of a difference and give the gun an advantage within its 4 hit kill range up close, with the C93 having slightly quicker kill times than a few of the others due to that slight increase in fire rate. This gives it more close ranged effectiveness than some of the other pistol carbines, though it's still not going to compete with the Frommerstop Auto, M1911 Extended or Sword Off Shotgun in CQC. So despite being better suited for closer proximities, there's still some other guns that tankers and pilots can equip that are a lot more lethal when used offensively, as the C93 carbine certainly isn't an aggressive weapon by any means. It's more catered for stealthy playstyles sneaking up behind enemy squads to quietly take them all out one by one with the help of that suppressor. And although the silencer doesn't exactly have a hell of a lot of use, due to the fact that gunfire doesn't put people on the minimap like in past games, it does make it harder for enemies to locate your position using sound without reducing muzzle velocity like it does in the past games. Listening out for audio cues plays a much more important role in Battlefield 1, due to the fact that the minimap is less effective, and so the C93 carbine might not have any crazy fast kill times to put it on par with some of the other guns from a statistical point of view. But that silencer definitely helps to keep you unnoticed, making it a slightly stealthier option for flanking enemy positions and sticking to the shadows. Probably the best thing about the C93 carbine is the fact that it's got an incredibly low recoil pattern, with it having a vertical kick of just 0.35 and horizontal values of 0.12, which is barely anything. This not only gives you one of the most accurate and stable recoil patterns of the Tango Pilot guns, but it's also got some pretty respectable figures when compared to other classes' primary weapons too, so I guess having that shoulder stock is a pretty good thing to have attached after all. Spread stats are fairly similar to the other pistol carbines, and there's no hipfire bonus either, though the gun's recoil pattern is enough to make it seem very manageable to control, and pretty accurate when firing individual shots. But although the weapon's got some great stats to back it up, there's a massive problem with the C93 carbine's accuracy, which can often make those low recoil values seem irrelevant in a lot of gun battles, and that's all down to the C93 carbine's visual recoil. If you shoot at the weapon's maximum rate, you'll notice that the iron sights pretty much disappear, due to the gun's toggle lock mechanism obstructing your view as it flicks upwards, preventing you from lining up shots precisely and often forcing you to fire slower, just so you can see those bloody iron sights. This is a really annoying and often detrimental flaw that makes the C93 carbine a fairly unreliable weapon to use, as you'll often have to guesstimate whether or not your target is lined up with the sights if you want to fire quickly, which isn't too hard to determine in close quarters, but a lot more difficult to do if you're shooting at an enemy a bit further away, especially if they're running around or moving in an unpredictable pattern. With the C93 carbine basically being the C93 pistol, with a stock and sound suppressor stuck on, it's no surprise to see that the gun's got exactly the same ammo capacity of 9 rounds, holding 8 rounds per magazine with another straggler left over in the chamber. Having 9 shots is generally lower than the other pistol carbines due to them all pretty much having extended magazines, increasing their ammo capacities over their standard sidearm counterparts, and so this kind of puts the C93 carbine at a slight disadvantage in comparison as you'll be able to take out a couple of guys up close, sometimes with a bullet to spare if you're accurate enough, but then you'll hit a wall and you'll have to choose to either reload the gun or swap over to your sidearm to continue the fight. The other pistol carbines could have carried on going, but the C93 carbine's lack of extended magazine presents you with a bit of a problem, and because it can take up to 8 rounds to kill someone further away, you might even need to reload during a gunfight just to take down a single enemy, leaving you even more vulnerable whilst you do so. 
Thankfully, the gun reloads pretty quickly, taking 1.35 seconds to swap over a partially empty magazine, and about 2 seconds when it's completely empty. These are actually slightly nippier times than the other similar weapons, not by miles, but still faster nevertheless. And so if you do run out of ammo in the heat of battle, reloading shouldn't really cause you too much of a problem, but just remember that it's still always a tad quicker to switch over to your sidearm. So anyway, in conclusion, the C93 carbine is a bit of a quirky gun that can be useful in some situations, but often struggles to deliver in a competitive sense. Its lack of power over distance prevents it from being a practical weapon beyond those closer ranges, though with its fire rate being a tiny bit quicker than most of the other pistol carbines, this at least gives it a slight edge in CQC. The best factor of the C93 carbine is its incredibly low recoil pattern, making it a very controllable and accurate gun when firing multiple shots towards a target. But this is massively overshadowed by the fact that it also suffers from some, if not the worst visual recoil of any gun in the entire game, due to the pistol's toggle lock mechanism jumping upwards after each pull of the trigger, completely getting in the way of your iron sights and making it much harder to stay on target to line up individual shots. This creates a pretty big issue with the gun's usability, and although it can fire and essentially kill up close slightly quicker than some of the other similar weapons, you'll need to fire slower if you want to be able to see your sights, which is crucial for landing shots on target further away and this is going to increase those already pretty lengthy kill times even further, making the gun even worse for ranged battles too. The C93 carbine holds less ammunition than the other pistol carbines, which might present a problem if you need to take down several enemies one after the other. Though with it having speedy reloads and a swift deploy time, you can swap over those mags and switch to and from your secondary weapon fairly easily to help keep yourself guarded as much as possible, so having a shorter magazine size isn't really something you need to worry about too much. The added silencer helps to keep your location hidden, as your gunshots are going to be less noticeable when you're behind enemy lines, and overall the C93 carbine can perform reasonably well in the right scenario. It's much more suited for sneaking around in the shadows at within those closer ranges, but it doesn't really fit in well with an aggressive mindset. You're usually going to be outmatched by the weapons you're up against, though flanking the enemy position can often be done better with the C93 carbine due to those quieter gunshots. So that's pretty much it for another weapon guide folks, hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Make sure you subscribe to see loads more content on Battlefield that's already on the channel and coming out soon, and of course, thanks for watching. Take it easy, and I'll see you in that next episode.